Um, this is Samson, and we're gonna, in this video we're gonna go over a lot of loose leash training tips. Um, he has some leash reactivity. Now dogs have what's called a fight or flight response. So if something happens, they don't, they're, not, they're spooked or they're uncomfortable, they wanna either run away from it, sit, passive training, or they wanna run and attack it. And a lot of times the leash prevents them from running away, and a lot of us as handlers don't read our dog's body language, and we, in their mind, we're leading them to doom. For dogs, a straight ahead approach is very confrontational. So if I'm walking down, okay, go ahead, grab a seat. I'm gonna talk a little bit. So if I'm walking down the sidewalk, we're in an alley right now because we don't wanna have any other dogs around while we're practicing this. You wanna find the best, the easiest scenario possible to help your dog practice and learn new skills. So there are no dogs around and we're gonna be walking around here. So if, if, if this is a sidewalk, we're walking down the sidewalk and another dog's walking towards us, for two dogs, running, walking, walking straight up to another dog is very aggressive. That's a very impolite way of, of meeting. So the sidewalk unfortunately facilitates this approach and it's, it's very unnerving for dogs. It's like somebody comes up and just start yelling at you as their introduction. It's just very off-putting. For dogs, when they meet, they actually like to meet in kind of a, if they approach, they do it in kind of a rounded line. And so if you can, if you do want to approach another dog, you want to kind of do, take that half circle lining approach, the other dog will probably do it and you'll end up in a circle. Um, but because that's a problem for a lot of dogs, um, they, a lot of dogs will communicate to us they're uncomfortable with that by doing what we call cutoff signals. And I'm going to go through several of them. One of them could be if, if somebody's reaching towards me and I'm a dog and I don't like that person or don't want to be interacted, I might turn my head to the side. So subtle, we wouldn't even notice it. We just think the dog's looking over there. No, it's a subtle way of saying, I, I don't appreciate what you're doing. The other thing that a dog might want to do is it might actually turn its whole body away. It might stare directly at the uh, stimulus or the trigger, or it might de deliberately look away from the trigger. We call this dry panting with their mouth open when they're not particularly hot. Now, they could also be hot. They could also just be turning around. So this is like us. I could say F you to someone and mean it in an aggressive way, or I could say it to a friend in a joking sort of way. And so dog communication has a lot of that, and that really throws a lot of people off. Now, dogs can also show signs of anxiety. Um, uh, uh, the uh, ears, if the ears are rotated forward or far back. Um, Baring the lips is pretty obvious. Growling is, uh, is a warning as well. Now, growling is not aggression. And most people, I see a lot of people, they make the huge, one of the biggest mistakes, most dangerous mistakes you can make is the dog growls and they jerk the leash to the side. Bad dog. And what you'll do is teach the dog not to growl. Okay, well, if something's not coming and I don't like it, I'll just go ahead and straight bite them. That's a wall, that's why we have a growl, it's a warning. So don't ever uh, correct your dog if it is growling. Now, if your dog is reactive to something, we have something, dogs have two levels, essentially. We call it sub-threshold, which is ready, what he is now, nice and relaxed and balanced, or able to deal with things. And then above threshold, which is basically hysteria. When somebody's hysterical, you're not gonna reach them. You have to wait for them to calm down. If they're hysterical about a spider, you're gonna have to take them away from the spider. And that's one of the best things you can do with the dog, is increase the distance between them and whatever they're reacting to. Now, a lot of times, dogs will warn with a stare. So I'm walking down the stair, and usually it's with a lowered head. They'll, sometimes they'll hold their breath, or they'll breathe really fast. Or, uh, like I said, the turning away and a lot of the other signals that I've talked. Sometimes they'll turn their head to the side and yawn. That's also known as a calming signal. So what you might want to do is, if you have a dog that is reactive to other dogs, is you might have, want to have your partner or friend or somebody have a camera and be walking in the street next to you on a walk and filming you. And that way, when you do see another dog, you'll see, and make sure you can see the dog, you keep it sideways so you can see the dog, and if pre preferable, I'd like to have the camera there capturing us and the, the stimulus ahead of us, so then you can start seeing what your dog's particular triggers are. One person, one dog might do one thing, another dog might do something else. Okay, so these are just some body language and things to be aware of. If you see these things from your dog, and then you take action for your dog, you're telling your dog, I will take care of the situation, I don't need you to do it. If you don't take that dog's warnings and you just keep leading the dog straight towards the other dog or to doom, the dog will start lunging and barking and reacting. Now, uh, the very first thing we want to do is he is a giant breed dog. And the guardians were using a prong collar because it gave them a little bit more control. I never use them because they're, it's a pain causing device and they're illegal in almost every country except the United States. And if a dog is really in that mode, they will not care. And I've seen it puncture the skin and actually damage the trachea. And the whole reason it works is by causing pain and discomfort to the dog. Dogs are wonderful animals. They don't need to have pain and discomfort in order to learn. All we have to do is teach them. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. 
So, all right, with the long prelude out of the way, if when you're doing this, you want to find an area where you're not going to run into other dogs. You're not going to have stimulus or things, no construction, no weed eaters, no lawnmowers, anything that's going to set your dog off. If the, if the location has that stuff going on, pull, take a break, go back inside, wait for them to be done and come back. That will, even though it's not convenient for you, that will influence things in a bad way. So the very first thing I want to do is teach the dog that when it gets to the end of the leash, instead of continuing pulling, I want it to come back to me. A lot of us will pull our dogs back to us. Dogs have an opposition reflex. So if, if we pull on the leash, they are programmed to pull against us. And if you try to correct and pull your dog in position, you're gonna have a very, very uncomfortable walk because that's all your dog's gonna be doing throughout the whole walk. So uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna walk towards the uh, camera here in a second. And as soon as the dog gets to the end of the leash and it gets tense, I'm gonna crouch down and I'm gonna be holding out a high value training treat here. And I'm gonna lure the dog back to me. Yeah, we have a car that's approaching. I don't know quite where the car is going. Nope, they're going behind us, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so, and he's aware of it. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the camera stay here. I'm gonna turn and walk a little bit back this way. We have, we arranged to have the sweet dumpster here just for aesthetics. It normally wasn't here, so it's usually the beach right here. All right, come here, buddy. Samson, Samson. Activate the nose. Nose control 60% of the dog's brain. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a six foot long leash here. Okay. All right, buddy. As soon as he gets in front, I stop. So I want, if we practice this enough, eventually, as soon as he gets the end of the line, I want him to be stop making that cry, uh, kissing sound to get him to come back because I don't want him to be pulling on it for too long. After enough practice, he'll hit the end of the line, he'll just automatically turn around and come back to you. Let's see if we do that again. Now you can call, you can assign a command word for this if you want, like recall, return, something along those lines, uh, and that way you can trigger the response later on. If you do want to assign a word like that, don't use it during the command stage. Only use it during the reward stage. That means right when you're giving the dog the treat. All right. So I'm just walking. I'm going to stop when he gets in front of me. Let him go ahead. Now I'm going to do a little bit farther. I'm going to try to lure him back into a heel position. Okay, where, whoop. Here you go, buddy. You gotta put it in your mouth when I give it to you. <laughs> that was on you. All right, let's do it one more time. Come here, buddy. I'm gonna show you that position again. Actually, I'm gonna show you from the side. It'll be a little bit easier. Actually, I'm showing, I'm doing it in the wrong direction. We're gonna do it this way. Better camera presence. I might do a TV show. I gotta figure these things out. All right, buddy, let's uh, do a circle. And you could give that a command word like position, spot, attention, whatever it is. <laughs> and now we have another dog that's coming out to potty. So now I want to show you what we call a U-turn. The other dog is at the end of the alley, so he still sees it, but it's far enough away you see he's not barking and reacting. So again, if your dog is reacting, increase the distance, and often you have to move around something to block their line of sight. All right, so now we're going to imagine this is a little bit larger than what I normally than a normal sidewalk, but it'll work for our purposes because we have a giant breed dog. Now, do you see have a side, a left side, or a right side? A sign, the guardian is shaking her head, no. So a sign, a left side, or a right side? There we go. Sit. Sit. I was starting to pull you into position. I don't like doing that. Sit. So I want him to always know that I'm always supposed to be on the right of the human or left of the human. When your dog is better trained, you can switch back and forth. But when you're first starting out, just I find it's easier to give them a right or left side. So when I'm walking down the sidewalk, we're, this is the sidewalk, essentially this, this darker area that we're going to see. Now, uh, this is independent of what I just got done showing you. These are separate exercises. I'm just doing consolidating to make it easier for the guardian. Okay, so we're walking down the sidewalk. I want to teach him to turn on command. 
Now, if I only turn when I see another dog, then that's what it represents, and that's when he's going to he's going to start not wanting to turn. He's going to look for the danger. So I'm going to choke up because we're for this one we want the dog walking next to us. Now, what I'm going to do is when I get to ready to turn, I'm going to turn myself sideways the sidewalk and go down like this. Turn. So the first step is to turn yourself sideways to the sidewalk. When you do that, immediately come down like this. I make a kissing sign, he's not looking. Now I don't give it to him at this stage. Now I take one step going this way. Now he took another step, he's closer. I take the next step and I release it and I say the word turn. Remember, anytime you use a treat, the dog should, the, no, the treat should go in the mouth first, they should hear it after. Sips. Turn. Now you saw that time, he followed the treat around. The first time I had to kind of stop and kiss to get him to look for it, but eventually he kind of learns on his own. As soon as I, I hear turn, if I turn around, turn, Samson, turn, turn. This is what I call my plan B, because if I'm walking and then a dog comes out, everybody, uh, on this, uh, just unexpected, runs out off leash. Well, that dog might be well behaved, but if you run straight up to this dog, that might create a problem. So I might see, and the guardians have noticed this, if they spot danger first and move them away, they can do it without any trouble. Well, if we only do that when we see another dog, that becomes associated with that. So what I'd like you to do is every block, and if it's a long block, do it twice. Somewhere on the block, just decide to do a U-turn. I actually do two. I don't do them back to back, because I find I get a little dizzy. So I'm gonna do one U-turn, Turn. I'm going to take about four steps this way, turn, and do another one as we're on our walk. So he's like, okay, my humans, every once in a while they just do donuts for no reason. That's the whole point. So then we do see a dog and we turn, he just thinks this is the same thing. Okay, now inside the house, we went over a focus exercise, sit. Uh, actually, before I do that, I want to do, show you one other thing. When we go on walks, we have a tendency to think of the duration or the destination of our walk. We're going to the park, and then the dog pulls or barks or does these other things, and we get very frustrated with the dogs because we're like, hey, jerk, I'm doing this for you. Why are you making it difficult for me? Well, it's because the dog is paying attention to everything but the handler. So I practice something I've, I've named it the long walk. So what I do is instead of thinking we're going to, you know, uh, Strandseat Dog Park, we're just going to walk to the end of this particular street. And as soon as we get to Bundy or whatever the street is, um, uh, then I turn around and come back. But Along the way, I'm never going to take more than five steps before I ask the dog to sit. So I'm going to back up a little ways. I'm going to show you the same thing. It's, it's asking the dog to sit. It's super duper easy. But for dogs, sitting is a more subordinate position. And sitting when there's another dog present, sit. I'll reward that one for sure. Um, and sitting when he won't be inclined to want to do this when another dog's present. But just like the U-term, we, we practice a lot. It becomes second nature. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take several steps. I'm going to stop. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna stop, then tell him to sit. When he sits, I'm gonna pop the treat in his mouth, and then we start going again. Samson. All right. Are you ready? Turn. Already getting the turn. This is awesome. All right. Oh, we'll leave that one for a squirrel. I know they're your nemesis. <laughs> For a dog this big, I don't want to let him get too much momentum. So before he gets in front of you, that's why we do the other exercise I already showed you. We want to get to the point where he doesn't pull, walk in. <coughs> if you do that enough, he won't pull. He'll just kind of walk next to you. Sit. Sit. So we're back in position. Sit. Now he's sitting in front of me and sideways, I would prefer to have, that's why I do the lure. But again, as you're doing this, you might practice 50 or 100 sits on a short walk. And you're not thinking about the duration, you're just walking to the end of the block and back. But now he's practicing sitting along a route that you're gonna run into dogs. So you wanna do this when there are no other dogs around. If another dog's around, don't try to get him to sit or definitely don't force him into a sit. So eventually he just starts learning 
if there's another dog or, or uh, just we just sit for no apparent reason. All right, so uh, we're gonna keep on filming. I'm gonna have you guys walk over there. I'm gonna walk over here. If you can grab my water so he doesn't run it over. Samson. 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 All right, now I'm going to show you the next couple of steps about teaching your dog to walk with a, in a heel position. So what I want to do is the heel position is, is I'm going to use the seam of my pants. So what I'm going to do is I'm walking Samson. I'm releasing treats into his mouth every step. Now we have, now a lot of people when they do this, they start doing it here and look where the dog is. He's, I'm training him to be in front. So I'm doing it right back here. Release. Samson. I know there's all sorts of good stuff there. So this teaches him to walk in the heel position as opposed to being in front of us. Now that's the first step. So when you're doing this, it's literally like every half step you're putting a treat into his mouth to keep him in that particular position. And again, with no stimulus around. Any dogs or squirrels, stop, wait for the stimulus to pass, and then start again. Don't ever, if you ever get frustrated, stop then as well. All right, the next step, I'm going to take a little distance to show you again. Samson. Once he's actually started, when you're doing this, you're going to see he's looking at you as opposed to looking everywhere else. So now I'm going to go like this. Samson. Now it seems counterintuitive to pull the, the treat away because you're taking it away from the dog. But we, want the, we don't want to hold the treat the whole time here. You can also hold them in this hand. I've just got too many leashes, uh, wraps in this hand. So the idea is, now, first we get him to look at us and pay attention to us. Then once we get to that point, then we start raising it up and immediately going back down to him. So what we're saying is when the treat goes away, that's, you should be excited. That means the time it's gonna start coming towards your mouth. So we go like this at first and then go straight back to him. And eventually we go one step while we have it up here, then we give him the treat. Then two steps while you know, but we pull it away here, and we're doing this whole thing while we're walking. And the idea is to gradually progress into more and more steps in between treats. And now instead of the dog looking around at everything else, I'm looking up at my human. I'm watching my human's feet, I'm watching my human, and now my focus is here as opposed to everywhere else. Now, um, now we he is a reactive dog towards other dogs, and I haven't seen it because we wanted to practice this stuff first. You want to practice these skills before you put your dog in a situation where it's going to be reactive. But we're in Brentwood. There's a million dogs like within a stone's throw of here. So in the short term, I would recommend that the guardians try to practice walking him. Right now they walk him really early in the morning. There probably aren't a lot of dogs at the hour that they're walking, but there's probably other people who also, it's LA traffic, they have to leave two hours early. So um, basically find a route and if you have to, practice walking up and down this place first. Now one other little trick for dogs is a lot of times we have too much excess energy. So if we can play a little bit of game, uh, now for him because he has some, uh, he has uh, problems with his hips as well as uh, some joint issues, uh, we might want to actually do something, some scent games as opposed to physical uh, exertion. For dogs, using their brain is almost more draining than using physical, uh, than physical exercise. Samson, 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 puppy, puppy, puppy. There we go. High pitched sounds can sometimes help. I say puppy, puppy, puppy because a lot of breeders will say that when they feed their puppies, good breeder, you could tell a dog is a good breeder because you usually say that they come running even if they're a 12 year old adult. All right, so now we've been working at this for a little bit of time, so we're gonna basically, uh, we're gonna wrap this up here in a sec. Uh, but again, when you wanna do this, maybe do a little scent games, Google scent games, and do that in your apartment first, or your condo, excuse me. And then once you get to the point, come here buddy, uh, where, where we're comfortable, come and do a little bit of practice here, then go for your walk. So before every walk, we refine and resharpen our, our, the edge of our skills, and it kind of sets the dog up for success. All right, Samson just laid down, so that's uh, his signal that we're done with this video. These are some tips and tricks that you can use to stop your dog from pulling on the leash and have good leash training.